So selling your reptiles, why would you want to? Well, two reasons normally. Um, it's an unwanted pet. You've probably only got one or two um, reptiles or animals. Uh, your kids are fed up with it. You're fed up with it. You didn't reckon on that 20, 30 year lifespan um, being a problem. And now you realize you're not going to want to keep it that long. Or you're getting more interested in the hobby. Um, and the ball python that you bought, you feel it's a little bit boring. And you've realized it's a pet rock and it only comes out when you're asleep. And you've seen a, another reptile or snake or something that interests you more. But maybe fortunately for you, you don't have enough space to expand a huge collection. So you kind of got one or two animals and you, and you want to get rid of one. Or someone like myself that breeds reptiles uh, for a purpose. So I breed mostly unusual colubrid snakes. Uh, the purpose is actually... It adds a massive dimension to the hobby, to keeping these animals, breeding them is another level. And those that are unusual and more sought after, you can then sell them or sell the surplus. You might keep some back, you might give some to like-minded friends, and you'll have a surplus to sell. On that money, you can reinvest in your reptile addiction to buy new species that you haven't yet worked with. And that's, that's certainly from where my breeding comes from. So either way, We've got reptiles that are surplus to our requirements and we need to find them new homes. And sometimes that really is a case of new homes. Um, I don't know what we've got in here. Oh, there's a blue tongue skink. Down, I can't show you him really. He's down there. Wee! <laughs> He's down there. People just want to get rid of them. So a blue tongue skink. It's an Australian blue tongue skink. So it probably costs someone 300, 400 quid um, plus the full enclosure which they gave me. So, you know, the best part of a grand's worth of stuff maybe. Uh, and they just got bored of him and he came to me if you want to sell them I've set up a website for you uh, it's been going since Covid really it cost me a fair bit of money um, to help you move on or sell your surplus offspring now it's free to use there's, there's, if for a fiver you can have a featured advert and you can you know it gets popped to the top but it's free to use there's no gimmicks there's no adverts there's nothing in it for me whatsoever at all zero um just me doing something for the reptile community and obviously it's a platform i can sell my offspring on so the one way is to use a, a dedicated a dedicated website so i urge you to go on there it's, it's for you the community in the uk only i'm afraid but for sure the more you use it, the better it will get, the better a facility you guys will all have. The first time you've gone there, I don't know, like any any sales website, you scratch your head a little bit, fill it out, and then it's dead easy. Once you've done it, once you put an advert on there, it's dead easy. It's a generic template, so there's things on there you don't need to add, and there's nothing compulsory. So when it asks for your address, I wouldn't put my full address in, um, but put your postcode in or put in something like, you know the town you live in people want to know how far they've got to travel or if it's worth them traveling for a reptile and also of course they might just want to get a courier but they want to make sure it's one or the other you don't have to put all those details in there that it asks for and like any advert the more details you put the more response you will get scammers they're everywhere always be aware always be aware of scammers don't send off uh, the full price of an animal um, for someone you just absolutely don't know uh, if someone's pushy, that have a red flag there, of course. Um, there's a lot of scammers out there. We try and filter the website and make sure it's all above board. Um, maybe someone gets through, maybe they don't, hopefully not. But always be aware, anyone that's pushy for your money and anyone that's withholding information, a bit vague, or, of course, the price is too good to be true. It usually, if it's too good to be true, it isn't true. The downside is we're living in funny times. So in 2022, all the colubrid snakes and the black headed pythons I bred, they were nearly all sold before they'd hatched from their eggs. It's not like that anymore. It's not like that at all anymore. So what you've got now is a time where, I think since two years ago, since the energy crisis two years ago, the snake market especially, not so much the lizards, but the snake market especially, devastated in the UK. It's flat on its face. Um, Yellowtail Kribos I was breeding in 2022, 750 pounds was the breeder's price all day long, sold before they hatched. Um, this year I've sold some for 350 pounds. 
uh, they've got snapped up, but there's nothing else I can do. The shops have even downpriced theirs from last year to £495. The market is only what the market is. The value of anything is only what people are buying it for at the time. So you've got two choices when you put in on your advert. Do some market research for pricing. Um, don't go just by what other people's adverts. Look how long those adverts have been there. If someone's selling a corn snake for 100 quid, it doesn't mean a corn snake's worth 100 pounds right now. If that advert's been up for six months, it means they're not selling for that. And that's just a brutal reality of a marketplace of any kind, even living animals. If you're selling them, they're only worth what people will buy them for. So at the moment, snakes especially, across the board, almost very, very low. Um, Royal Python, that pyramid scheme for breeders selling to breeders of the Royal Python morphs, I've been offered whole collections of 30 to 50 Royal Pythons and they're everywhere. That market's collapsed. Um, common stuff like corn snakes, bearded dragons, leopard geckos, you're really advertising more looking for a really good home than to re recoup your outlay of say four years ago for sure so just bear those things in mind for sure um having said that i've just put a deposit down uh, for a really rare snake that's costing me thousands um that's the full price that it was probably four years ago but it's just a species that's still so incredibly rare to get in the uk so yeah people like me we're still paying top dollar for things we want and yet we're selling our own really unusual stuff really rare stuff um, for a much lower price. This year, four lion snakes, Russian rat snakes, false water cobras, black rat snakes that I've bred. Um, they've, I've gifted them almost to like-minded people, ridiculously, probably not even cover the cost of incubation. But I'd rather they go and make people happy that are genuine, that I know we're gonna keep them and cherish them, than to put them on a website for two years ago prices and end up with 20 false water cobbles still here next year. Even though I've cut right back this year in 2024 on the stuff I've produced. Um, Vietnamese Blue Beauties, I was producing four clutches a year. This year, I've gone for one clutch. And on that note, personally, I've sold breeding pairs of um, Puebla Milk Snakes, breeding pairs of Blue Beauty Snakes, breeding pairs of black headed Pythons, producing Albinos, and breeding pairs of Yellowtail Crebos, the male, the biggest in the UK, I'm sure. And I've sold those snakes for half the value a breeding pair would have went for just two years ago. And they still didn't get snapped up in the first week. So times are different in 2024 and 2023. You've got to be aware of that. Shops, mostly they don't want your stuff. They, they don't want them. Most reptile shops don't really even want your adult animals. That They sell baby corn snakes and baby bearded dragons far faster than they actually sell adults at the same price and they don't want lots of adults on the shelves. So it's a difficult thing, but this is what to do. It's your animal, you've been looking after it, it's, you've got a duty of care to it. Advertise it wisely, but still be prepared to look after it while the times are like this. In the last month, I've seen some horrific stuff, stuff I see once a year, I've seen almost weekly, 15 foot Burmese python, a friend of mine rescued from a busy roadside, roadside burge. And my friend, the tree surgeon, he's found corn snakes up in trees that have obviously been wild for quite a while. And royal pythons, again, dumped on the roadside, dumped in parks. North American colubrids, like your corn snakes and your king snakes, they'll probably do a mild British winter pretty well. The downside is, if they do it too well, they could be invasive species. We're not allowed to keep all kinds of animals in this country anymore that we used to just 10 years ago because they've become invasive species, um, sliders and red terrapins. Our hottest summers, they've now produced viable eggs and young in Britain. They've become invasive species list, then, then you're not allowed to have them. Um, the other side is, of course, your Burmese python, 15 foot long. How long have you looked after that animal from a baby? How much love and care have you given it to dump it, knowing it's going to die? It's gonna get a respiratory infection in autumn and it's gonna to freeze to death in winter. It cannot, impossible, survive our winter. The same as a royal python. Do you know what? I think people like that should have the decency to just put their hands on it and euthanize that animal. Give it some respect, kill it quickly. If you're gonna dump it in the wild, it's a disgrace to the hobby and it affects the reptile hobby. And that effect means it affects people like me that have been passionate about reptile keeping for a long time. So 
think of your options, but releasing them under any circumstance simply isn't and shouldn't be an option in your brain for sure. Um, another option you can do if you're a breather, what I've done is to um, make my own website. Go on, uh, I go on Freeola, but you can make your own website. They're not hard to do. Template websites, I can do one. You can definitely do one. So you can not only showcase the animals in your collection for people to go on waiting lists or to inquire about, you can have a sales page of what's currently incubated and what's available. Um, easy stuff to do. And like mine, give people a bit of information, create a little bit of a community, um, give something back and, and put basic care of the species you have on there. Give people a heads up, they might they want to know how big that's going to grow, um, how easy or hard it is to look after, how complex it is to look after. Give something back, create an audience for your breeding um, and be available. I don't answer my phone ever because of scams, but if you want me, you can leave a message. Uh, you can message me, the details are on the website. I always respond to people within 24 hours. Give your potential customers something to work with, um, a reason to buy from you because you're reliable, you're decent, you're trustworthy, and so on and so forth. But really, I do want to push the Reptiles for Sale website in the UK because I've set that up at my expense. It, it was a fair bit um, to help the community here in the UK. And this is the time where we really do need to use it because it, it's needed. There's a lot of stuff out there. You use it for market research. Use it to help move your animals to good homes, not to let them go. Uh, to the wild for sure where does it leave you as a breeder you can hang on to stuff and hope things improve like I said personally I've cut down I've halved what I've produced this year because I forecast it was going to be like 2023 um, and I'll be very seriously thinking in the spring what animals I pair up for sure I don't want stuff here that people don't want there's just no point bringing these things into the world is there if Mine will all go because I know a lot of people, but there's no point bringing things into the world that A, is just going to reduce the price of the animals further and risk, it risks people. If you market them too cheaply to people you don't know, there's idiots that think they'll buy them cheap and sell them for more, not realising how things are right now. And then where do they end up? Who knows? So be thoughtful about your animals. They're, they're what makes this passionate hobby. and. Yeah, people want to take these rights away from us. Don't hand them any ammunition for sure. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope it's food for thought. Have a look on my website, kingsnakes.co.uk. Just have a look at what I've got. But get on that reptilesforsale.co.uk. If you're in the UK, whether you've got invertebrates like your tarantulas, weird collections of hissing cockroaches, your reptiles, your amphibians, exotic animals, and for me, really importantly, there's a whole category on there for European herptiles. That's a big movement moving forward. European stuff that you can keep outside or in a greenhouse in these times of high energy and high cost of living. That's the way to go forward with your reptile or your amphibian collections. Stuff you can keep outside. Um, stuff that people have never heard of. Go and have a look on Lee Brindley's uh, YouTube channel. Go and have a look at Great Crested Newts UK. He's producing not only phenomenal crested newt species from around the whole of Europe, almost every species captive bred legit, legally. He's also producing colour morphs of them, as well as colour morphs of common frogs and common toads. Probably one of the first breeders of colour morphs of common toads coming up, certainly next spring. But check out his common frogs. Never mind your stuff from the tropical rainforest. These things, captive bred, will blow your mind and you can keep them outside with no electricity costs whatsoever and very little food costs. So one thing to think about with your collections is, do you gradually phase one thing out and phase something in that's much more economic to keep, especially if it's outside in a naturalistic setup? See you soon.